Today's events were inspired by the Marie Curie charity, and today has been designated as a National Day of Reflection. On this, the first anniversary of the first lockdown period because of COVID-19. None of us has been unaffected during the last year. The chapel is available all day, and you are especially welcome to join us there at any time for as long as you wish. The day's schedule includes the one minute silence at noon, but the chaplains will be on hand throughout, offering a short reflection on the hour, every hour, between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. If you would like to speak to a chaplain today or at any other time, the on-call chaplain is available all the time. A year like no other. That's the title of a recent government report from the Office of National Statistics. Few would argue, I suspect, with that description. A year ago, most of us had never heard of furlough or Zoom. A year ago, Corona was just a brand of Mexican lager. Most people outside the healthcare context were learning about PPE, lateral flow tests, antibodies and antigens. We all had to master a new routine, social distancing, track and trace apps, obsessive hand washing and mask wearing almost all the time. A year ago, who would have believed we'd be into our third lockdown? Yes, a year like no other, it has certainly been. A year when, for so many, the bins went out more often than we did. When we learned to appreciate the little things, like food deliveries, a chat over the garden wall, a walk in the park, or a simple but precious hug. When we discovered anew the kindness of strangers, when we learn to do old things in new ways, especially using technology more creatively, when we were challenged professionally and personally in ways we could barely have imagined a year ago, when we found out how it felt to be utterly exhausted, but somehow having to keep going, when we had to care for people who were very sick and relatives in deep distress, and we couldn't allow them to meet, except by phone or online. When our every word had to be weighed carefully. When friends, colleagues or family members tested positive or were seriously ill or even died. When we drew on resources of strength and resilience we didn't know we had until now when we realise that actually we're not quite okay, but that that's okay. When so often we didn't know whether to laugh or cry. This day of reflection offers an opportunity to pause for a while in our hectic working lives. Indeed, we're being encouraged to do so officially for our own well-being and self-care. We need time to be kind to ourselves. So this day is set aside to allow us time and space to take stock, as it were, perhaps to reflect on the past, but not to dwell on it. To remember the highs and lows, to cherish our values and give thanks for our own lives. To grieve for those we have cared for or whom we have loved and lost to light a candle of remembrance or of hope for the future, to pray for others and for ourselves, to express our many and varied emotions, whatever they are, or to sit quietly and just be. Perhaps now we're over the worst. Let's hope that is so. And as we look to the future, we can give thanks for the signs that things are getting better, to a time when it will be okay to meet again, to chat again, to hug again, to feel more normal once again. Poet Tom Roberts from London 
received huge plaudits for his poem about COVID. The Great Revelation, he called it, which has an optimistic and hopeful tone. After this year, like no other, he stressed that trying to think of the good things is now more important than ever, saying, I think the magic is that if you choose to believe that some good can come out of something really bad, the probability of that happening increases. And I'm reminded of Joyce Grenfell's poem about grief, which echoes that sentiment. It ends, weep if you must, parting is hell, but life goes on, so sing as well. So on this day of reflection, let's ponder how best we can contribute to that aim and resolve to support one another in realising it. Thank heavens for each other. We've got this far together. We're still working through it together. And we can face the future in hope together. And now we mark the one minute silence with the rest of the nation. <laughs>